Are we ready? I love the energy. All right. Welcome to you guys online. Please put in the chat where you're tuning in from. We want to know who we're talking to. So go ahead and drop your location, drop your location, drop your location. I'm so excited about this episode, especially following last week's episode. I believe today is going to be really, 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 really good. And so I can't wait to get into it. If you guys are ready, somebody type I'm ready and let's take a seat. Let's go. Yeah. Love the energy. Well, all of you guys that are at home as well, actually really, really prepare yourself because this episode is going to be possibly a little triggering, but I believe even as I was preparing for this, the places that can seem often scary to confront or not so pleasant to confront can often be the places of our deepest deliverance and, liber and liberation. So just prepare your hearts and minds as we go into this today. Remember, we're still in our introductory series and just talking about how to yield different areas of our lives. And more and more, I just want to encourage you, especially because we're still at the beginning of this year, right? And just all the things that God has prepared for us, all the things he's declared over us, all the things that he said as we were coming into this new year, it's so like God to go the extra mile where he will give you the instruction, but he will also supply the strength, the provision, and the grace that is needed for you to be able to fulfill what it is that he's asking you. And this is just one of those ways that he's doing that, just helping us to posture our hearts and our minds in the right place that he needs us to be for everything that he, he wants to give to us, right? So today, we're going to talk about yielding your past and yielding your future. And... When we initially were talking about this, so how it had initially come to me was actually yielding to the past. And just off the bat, just thinking of that, it's like, okay, why do I need to yield to the past? Because it seems like everything else we hear and even just our reality as new creations is Christ coming to make us new, Christ coming to uh, put our past behind us. The old is gone. Behold, you are a new creation. Everything in Christ has been made new. You are not the same again. So what is this idea? How will we yield to the past? But I just want to challenge somebody today in your thought process that many times a lot of us have found ourselves especially coming out of what we were talking about last week, right? Yielding to purpose. This idea of where I'm trying to get to, this idea of what I'm trying to achieve, this idea of that place, that place, that place that I want to reach versus this place where God has me right now that is still connected to that place that he is leading me to. And when we have to talk about the past beyond just the understanding that I'm hoping we're gaining more and more that you know, like five minutes ago from now is already my past, right? And every experience that I've had that has led me to this moment was necessary to lead me to this moment. And so those places in your life that you have been like, man, I don't really see how God can use that for his glory. Today, I really want to encourage you that that place that you think is absolutely no use, is absolutely no value to God, is actually going to be one of the most powerful tools that he will use to be able to glorify himself in your life here and now and for where he is taking you. And just as I was preparing for this, um, a couple of things that he started highlighting to me, and we're going to go through them, but one of the people that I want us to look at first is Rahab. She's called Rahab the harlot, right? And if you don't know the story of Rahab, she was a harlot, a prostitute, we would say, in today's uh, term. And she's in the book of Joshua. When Moses leaves, hands off to Joshua, Joshua cro uh, crosses the River Jordan, and now they're getting ready to begin to conquer the Promised Land and all the spaces that God gave to them. And when the spies go, they find this woman that then becomes a tool that God uses to be able to not only lead them to victory, but when you study the genealogy of Jesus, she is literally one of the ancestors of Christ. And as I began to just ponder on her specifically, I just thought of her coming out of that place, right? She got delivered, her family got saved, she gets married, she basically is engrafted into the people of Israel to become one of them. So I started kind of to put myself in that position to imagine if somebody ever came to Rahab, like after asking her, like, oh, how did you meet these guys? You know, like, how did you end up here? 
And I was wondering what would be her response, even just in light of us today. How much are we, not proudly, not necessarily in a proud way, but how comfortable are we in sharing the reality of the things that God has actually used to bring us to where we are? And so I imagine, I'm like, okay, hey, Rahab, how did you get to this point? And I wasn't sure that if Rahab was here today, her response would have been as easily accepted just because of the perceptions that we have of people. But the reality was, had she not been who she was doing what she was doing at that particular time, that God has positioned her and he counted her righteous because she was able to accomplish a task in that place that he was going to bring her out of, not because she was going to stay there forever, but God got glory out of that. And so my encouragement for you today is the things that you think you try so hard to separate yourself from and you try so hard to um, lock up, so to speak. It's like, that's a chapter of my life that I never want to go back to. Remember how we talked about God has written all the books of your life. That place was not a mistake in the way that you think. We have to come to the point to really merge or put together the confessions we make about God and the realities of the lives we live. Because we cannot continue to say that God is in control, God knows everything, God is aware of everything, and still look at things that happen in our lives that are not so pleasant and say, that was a mistake, or I don't know how that happened. If God is in control of everything, if God wrote everything down, everything that pertains to your life, then he also accounted for those places. Not only accounted for them, but he also included those things. And that's part of the wisdom of God that will never really make sense to us. But he knows what he is forming in you. He knows what he is bringing out of you. He knows the end that he is leading you to. And that part is necessary for where it is that he is taking you. That part was necessary for Rahab to be able to be then who she will be. And now consider the experiences that you have. Like, I think one of the things for me more and more, even just in myself, is to recognize where we have great examples, great men of God, Papa Lo, the best example that I can use. But the challenge that having him even as a spiritual father and mentor and guide to us, where he will also be very intentional to push us in places where we can be very content to say, okay, we're just going to follow in your footsteps. But him having the spiritual understanding and discernment to recognize your experiences are different from mine because there's a certain place that you're able to reach that I'm not going to reach. There's a certain place that you're going to go to that I'm not able to go to because of who you are, because of the things that you've gone through, because of all that God has made you to be. I can be an extension of that. I can guide you in that, but you are meant to go there. I'm not the one that's supposed to go there. And it takes not only maturity on his end, and I'm so grateful for that because it's the push that he constantly puts on us that are growing up under him, under his guidance, but also on the flip side of you that are being mentored or you that are being raised to realize that I actually have something that God has put inside of me for a specific person. And it begins to... um, encourage you in the Lord because you begin to learn and realize, wait, yes, that was part of my story, but I didn't stay stuck there. So first of all, it puts you in a place of gratitude to recognize that the sovereignty of God that watched you in those places that did not make sense, that by the time you come and encounter the grace of God, you're looking at yourself like, oh my gosh, like what did I used to do? You know how sometimes you think of the places God brought you from, you're like, oh dang, like I don't really want to think about that. But God was seeing you in all of that. He was seeing you in all of that and considering all of that so that when tomorrow you then will encounter somebody else that's there, your life and where God has brought you becomes the ultimate testimony. And sometimes I think we really rob God of his glory without even realizing it because of those things that we're trying to hide. How is God going to be glorified if you're good? It's like we really think we are good sometimes, even though we don't say it. But it's like, I don't want you to know how bad I was. or I don't want you to know just how crazy I could get. Uh, I just want you to know this version that God has delivered and who is risen. And that's it. Like, let's just rest in that. But where is the glory of God? Because the power is in that the grace was able to reach you where you were and raise you to where you are now. And he's still working in you to take you where he's taking you. The power is in that being the testimony. What do we say? The mess became the message. It's like the thing that was so dirty that did not make sense. He was able to take it, clean it. That is where the glory of God rests. 
That is where the power of God can be seen to the point that sometimes I'll sit and I'll talk to people sometimes and I'll share my testimony. They'll be looking at me and be like, Betty, you did that? I'm like, hey, listen, like we all came from somewhere and they cannot believe. And at first it used to kind of trigger me a little bit. I was like, what the heck? Like, what is that? And then God began to show me. He was like, but that is my glory. The point that God can change you so much and put his reflection on you so much that your past literally does not match your presence. Somebody looks at you and say, no, there's no way. That cannot possibly be you because it doesn't add up to who they're seeing right now. And that is the glory of God. So you cannot hide that. Like, don't be ashamed. And remember what we said about weakness, right? How when we try to cover those places, we find ourselves, it's like those silent struggles. And this is one thing that I pray God will deliver us as Christians and as the church as a whole more and more because so many of us are dying. So many of us are battling in private and being whooped by the enemy left, right and center just because we are afraid to shed light in that place. But it is the light that sets you free. It is the light that brings deliverance. And the thing that is exposed can be confronted. You will never be able to confront what you do not address. You'll never be able to confront what you're not willing to expose. And so, so many of us in the church, because of this mindset, we stay in these secret battles. We come out, we look good, we're smiling, but there's things that we are really bound in, things that we are really trapped in, and we will not come out because we will not allow the light. But listen, you cannot set yourself free. If we could do it, then we would have never needed a savior. And so when we're talking about yielding to your past, it's twofold. Yielding your past, yielding to your past. It's the part of you where God has brought you, embrace that by recognizing, hey, this is part, that was a necessary path for where I am today. Jesus, when the woman came and was crying at his feet and cleaning his feet with her hair and anointing him and kissing him, the man whose house was in looked at him and said, if this man was a prophet, he would never let her do that. Like, she's a sinner, she's a prostitute. Like, and by their doctrine and by their theology, if anyone that was defiled touched you, became defiled. But Jesus looked at him and he asked him, like, I've been in your house. You did not even wash my feet. She's been crying and literally washed my feet with her tears. She's been wiping them with her hair. She's been kissing me nonstop since I've been sitting here. And he gave them the parable of the man that had been forgiven much and the one that had been forgiven little. And Jesus asked, who will be more grateful? Who will love more? He said, he that has been forgiven much loves more. And so when you begin to understand that, the gratitude in you is the fuel for the love and love, not just the word or the emotion, but the love action, right? The love action that you're able to display towards the Lord growing in love. Like I always say, we never can really say, God, I love you because it's always God. I love you too. Because he loved us first. Like we never can, you know, it's always God, I love you too. Because you loved me before I even thought of loving you. You loved me before I even considered, or even before you were even in the picture of my mind and my calculation and my life. I love you too. He that has been forgiven much, loves much. So don't hide those places because you would not be here loving God like you do if it wasn't for that. Right. It's such a fuel and integral part of your walk with God and where it is that you're you're believing God is leading you. But even here and right now. So don't be ashamed of it. Don't be um, don't despise it because you cannot be separate from that person. Not in that way. Not in that way. And that's where the appreciation. It's a process. I know. And as I say this. I want you to even watch this again and meditate on it, sit on it, where you can truly get to the place that you can thank God for the things that you call mistakes in your life. It's a place you get to, that you can look back and say, this part was not so good. This part was actually a mess, but God, I'm actually thankful for that. I'm grateful for that experience because I'm able to recognize what it is that it taught me. I'm able to recognize what it is that it grew me in. I'm able to recognize what it is that it taught, it taught me to appreciate about where I am now. And I pray that you will get to the level where you can say, God, I thank you for that thing that was so hard, that made me to cry, that thing that I never thought I'll get over, that thing that I may still be struggling with, and that's part of your healing process. But where you can even say, God, I thank you for this because I know all things work together for my good. And that's it. That's the confession we make. That's the, that's the faith we walk with. That's the reality of this journey that he is making something beautiful out of us. He is bringing beauty for ashes. He is raising us to glory. He is conforming us to the image of his beloved son. 
God is working in you. So stop being ashamed and stop carrying that weight on you. Understand that it was part of your story. God is not looking from heaven surprised. He's like, oh my gosh, you went through that. I'm so sorry. I did not account for that. God is not doing that. He knows every part of what you are going through, every part of what you've gone through. And still, the stuff that you will go through that you have no idea that he knows is coming. He knows it all. He knows it all. And so when we now go from that into yielding to the future or yielding our future, what does that look like? Just the understanding, I think, that will change your life is that knowledge that my times and seasons are in the hands of God. My life is in his hands. Everything that's happening to me now, everything that has happened to me then, everything that will happen to me uh, in the future is all in his hands. And living in that reality puts you in a place where, honestly, where Job was, that level of, of knowing God, that anything that comes, no, I'm not going to curse. Like, this is not a surprise. I know that God is sovereign. I know that God is in control. God gives, he takes, even though God doesn't take in that sense. But he understood that nothing can happen to me unless God has allowed it to. Nothing can happen to me unless God has allowed it to. And it's hard for us to know this in the depths because sometimes stuff will happen and you'll be like, God, how? God, why? God, how could you? How could this? But nothing can happen to you without God allowing it to. From the smallest details of your life to the most major details of your life. Everything about your life, God has accounted for it. And when you live in that reality, that's what he was able to just say, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's us having that attitude that God, I may not know all the details of what tomorrow is, but what does uh, 1 Corinthians 2 even say? He says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. And one of the translations says that the human mind has not even been able to comprehend or even imagine or dare to think of the things that God has in store. But then it says, but by the spirit of God, we know those things. By the spirit of God, those things have been revealed to us. By the spirit of God, those things have been imprinted to us. And we were talking about how... um, Our spirit knows all things. Our spirit is eternal, especially in the place of us being joined to Christ, right? Our spirit knows everything. It is our soul that is growing. It is our soul that is maturing. It is our soul that is catching up to the reality of our spirit. It's like a remembering even, if you will, just like how he was telling Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. So it's like remembering that conversation that you had with God, remembering those interactions you had before he sent you on a mission to planet Earth, before he sent you on a mission, whether it was to your family, wherever he's positioned you. And so in that place, when I now begin to think of what's to come, when I now begin to think of what tomorrow holds for me, I come from the mindset of, God is leading every step that I take. God is orchestrating every, every, every encounter that I have. So all of this is intentional. Therefore, I position myself to always point God out, not in, um, oh, I see him, I see him, I see him, but even more so in the, okay, what are you doing here now and what am I a part of so that I can align myself to what it is that you're doing? Because when we don't come with that, a lot of times we begin to resist. We begin to to delay, even though in that sense, we really have no power to do so. But we can be, uh, it's like uh, back and forth because we're not wholeheartedly in a place. And what does scripture say? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And so we have to have that stability of mind, that oneness of mind to say, okay, God, What are you doing here right now? Okay, cool, let's flow. What are you doing here right now? Okay, let's flow. And that flexibility, I promise you, is what will make us efficient in the plan and the purpose of God for our lives because we're just able to move with him wherever it is that he leads us. Okay, you want me to serve now? Okay, cool, let me do this. Oh, you want me to teach now? Okay, let me do this. Okay, you want me to go there now? Okay, let me do this. Okay, I'm in a different uh, uh, position of my life. I'm a student now. Okay, let me focus on this. Okay, I'm an entrepreneur now. Okay, let me focus on that. And that's where we talk about living yielded, living yielded. Whatever it is that you're finding yourself at in life, wherever it is that you are, whatever you're doing, you are fully living, fully yielded. Fully living, fully yielded. So take away from yourself even the, 
what would we call it? The, the anxiety of the future? Matthew 6, what did he say? He said, how, if you worry, like, can you even turn one of your hairs white? Like, what's the point? Basically, that's what Jesus is saying. Why are you wasting your energy <laughs> on something that's completely beyond your control? Like, there's better things for you to do. Like, why are you spending your time doing this? He said, sufficient unto the day is the trouble there are. Focus on what is before you right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. I'll take care of you. I'm already there. You're not even there, but I'm already there. I'm already there. So when you realize that God is already in your tomorrow, why am I worried? Like by the time I get to tomorrow, I'm going to meet him there just as he's with me now. He's already there waiting for me. And I can wake up each day with that reality like, oh, okay, God, you're here now. You are waiting. Okay, what did you have planned for me? Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Like begin to think of you, your life in that way. Like come out of routine. Come out of routine. And I think sometimes that's why our faith has seemed so powerless sometimes. You know, our walk with God becomes so mundane, like the value of our times of prayer or our times in the word or our times of fellowship with the spirit become lost because we, it became mundane. We didn't approach it with that freshness, like, okay, here we are today. Like one of the analogies that the Holy Spirit used to teach me this was like, okay, today is a new day, right? I'm not going to get hungry today and tell myself, oh, but you ate yesterday. So why do you need to eat today? Nobody does that. If I'm hungry now, I want food right now. Like, I need to eat. Like, I'm hungry. But why do we not treat our spirit the same way? Why do we not consider it that way? Like, oh, okay, I read my Bible. It's like we put it off not in our spirit, man. That inner man just gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And before you know it, it dwindles. What would happen to you if you did not eat? Like, even just when we fast, consider the physical body. First day, second day, third day. Like, you're just fading away. <laughs> It just faded away. But that's what's happening to our spirit, man. And then something will happen all of a sudden. You're trying to call on somebody that's not there. Have you ever gone a long time without eating? And then what happens when you try to bombard food down? Sometimes you can even get sick. You can even harm yourself in that because you came out of, like, this was not, it was not um, properly, properly administered, if that's the word that I will use. So you literally will cause yourself harm trying to do something that is supposed to be beneficial to you. So imagine now when we come into a spiritual, our spiritual walk. Remember, God is in your tomorrow. Like I said, just as your mistake or that thing that you think is so terrible that happened yesterday. But it actually can happen in reverse too because some of us are so married to yesterday that we don't think tomorrow has anything better. There's that too. So it's not only just that, but there's others who feel like, man, that was so good. And I don't have it anymore. And I don't understand what's the value of this because that thing is gone and it's taken away. And I completely have no hope or desire or aspiration that tomorrow can be any better just because this thing I had was so good. On both ends of the spectrum. On both ends of the spectrum. And so where God is leading us, he knows your tomorrow. So now imagine you're like, okay, I'm not taking care of today because of whatever it was, whether it was me being sad or me being ashamed, whatever it is that you're dealing with in that place that is causing you to be distracted, not to pay attention to here, where the table has been set before you for you to feast and eat and gain strength, you're not doing that. So then by the time you get to tomorrow, to the thing that God was trying to equip you with here to be ready for, you're not ready. You're not ready. You don't have the strength that he wanted you to gain in this place. You don't have the knowledge that he wanted you to gain from this place. You don't have the wisdom that he wanted you to gain from this place. And you're, you face, you come to that tomorrow and you find that you fall short. You find that you fall short. Yielding, yielding, yielding to the past, yielding to the future, yielding our past, yielding our future. Understanding. And it's even truly yielding to the past in the sense of even accepting it, right? Accepting it. Yes, that is a part of my story. A lot of us are not able to do that. That's where we talk about traumas. That's where we talk about all these things. It's like it's a block in the mind. It's like it's a reality that has not fully been accepted and embraced in, through the filter of the image that you would want it to be. A lot of times that's really 
where we begin, even when you begin to psychologically counsel people, that's what you're trying to undo. It's the thing of what this image could have been and what it really was, and I'm not able to merge the two, and it's like it causes a shock. It's like my mind cannot, I can process it. I can process it, and so I can get stuck in that place. I can get really, really stuck in that place, <laughs> and it's that arrested development even that we were talking about last time. But it's like through the wisdom of God, through the grace of God, you begin to learn how to undo those uh, people go through counseling, all the different things that God has allowed, then the Holy Spirit himself helping us to navigate because you have to come to the point where you accept this is the reality of what happened. It's, despite of whatever it was that I thought, but this happened and this was my reality to the point where I am now and whatever it is that I need to heal and process and understand or analyze so that I can be whole here and whole for tomorrow. And we're not just going through life just in broken pieces, like because a piece of you is stuck over here. Then something will happen in another piece. And it's like, before you know it, you're progressing and it's less and less and less and less of you. Where it should have been more and more and more and more of you. Gaining wisdom, gaining experience. All of these things. And so this stuff is really real. But God coming to us at the top of this year saying, I want you to yield these things. And I want you to yield to them. Don't resist this. Because what are you going to do? Yesterday already passed. What, like, what can you actually do? Yesterday is already gone. The past has happened. It is history. But there's something that God is doing right now. So why would I stay stuck in that place and not allow him to be able to fulfill what it is that he's trying to fulfill in me here and now? So that as I walk with him, the fullness of all that he wants to do in me is able to be released for what he has for me tomorrow. And so our mindset, our mindsets, our mindsets have to shift because God is really, really wanting to do great things in our lives. And as, yes, I'm talking to all of us, but even as the church body, as the church body, these are things that we have to begin to really consider in the day-to-day attitudes in the day-to-day dispositions that we have of ourselves of how we are walking with the Lord. Come out of routine. Come out of routine. Be present with God in the moment. Be present with God in what he's doing right now so that you're able to maximize because if your experience is to benefit somebody now today, it doesn't help you being stuck there because you're not able to bring that resource into here. And it doesn't also help you using that to prepare for the future, whatever is supposed to happen. And we are all a body that is supposed to minister to one another. My weakness may not be your weakness. Your weakness may not be my weakness. And so in the place where you struggle with the thing, through my strength, you can learn how to navigate. And through your strength, I can learn how to navigate in my weakness by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and by the grace that God supplies. He says, in your weakness, I am made strong. So stop trying to deal with these things by yourself. I'm telling you, one of the most powerful things, that's why God said, oh, scripture tells us in James, through the Holy Spirit, yeah, God said it. Um, He said, confess your sins one to another. I always used to sit down, I was like, man, like, this seems crazy because sometimes it's the things like you're like, really, can I ever really say this? But through wisdom, of course, I'm not saying go and announce and God will give you discretion. You will know who to say things to so that you don't go and just be saying everything like that you're not supposed to say. Because sometimes also in your confession, you can cause another person to stumble. So use wisdom. Absolutely. But there's something so powerful in that that it says confess your sins one to another. If you have ever tried it struggling in anything and you had somebody that you're able to say, hey, I'm struggling with this, just you shedding light on that is so powerful. There is already half of the deliverance that happens in that personal struggle when you're able to open up to your fellow believer and say, I am struggling with this thing. The problem and why I'm saying us as a church, this is the thing that we also have to check so that we can fix ourselves and arrange ourselves is that we, we have to... We have to recognize that somebody is not coming to me so that I then use that against them. Because that is what has made a lot of us not be willing to speak if we're honest. Is because I don't know that I can trust you. Like before I know it, you're going to go and use this thing against me. But we have to learn to be our brother's keeper. Like the world does this sometimes so much better than the church. And it's really, really, really sad. 
Because if we don't know how to cover each other, where Christ has covered us, if we don't know how to strengthen one another, where Christ has strengthened us, like then how do we expect to be strong as a body? Because you're not going to be in every place that the, the body needs to be. You're not going to be in every place that the kingdom needs to be represented. And so if you're not helping to strengthen that other part that is going to go to another place, east, north, south, west, wherever it is that we're dispersed, then we're actually causing harm to ourselves. But I truly pray for you that God will lead you or even just send you one. And some of you, that just needs to be your prayer. God, I don't need a crowd. I don't need 10 people. I don't need five people. Father, just send me that one person that is going to be my Barnabas. Even the Apostle Paul, he needed the Barnabas, that comforter, that consolator, that person that was encouraging him in the thing that he had to do. God, just send me one person that I can, that I can walk this with. My brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, send me that one person so that you're not going through things by yourself. You're not struggling with things by yourself. And then by the time it comes, it's like you're beaten down. Although why do you have to be beaten down? It's like, man, like even in the places where by the grace of God, I've been able to mentor or counsel some people. Sometimes I'm like, why did it take you so long to speak up? Why did you wait until you got to that point? Whereas, whether it's in wisdom or just an idea that I could have given you to help you, man, this was so easy. You didn't have to be tormented for that long. Or if it was just the knowledge of oh, you can go to this person so it can help you. And that's just me as Benny. How much more for us as a body of Christ? How much more for us with the leaders and the apostles and the prophets and the pastors that God has positioned to be able to help us? Let us not, let us not allow the enemy to take advantage of us in that place, in the places of our weakness. Part of us shedding light, or part of us submitting that to God is in us allowing, allowing ourselves to, to open that up so that the light of God can shine in that place. And whatever resource, whatever wisdom he will give. There are battles, there are things that God can deal with you privately. And so it's even using wisdom and or discernment to understand the direction that the Lord will give you. There are things that we need in partnership. Like you even study the scriptures. There are things that Jesus addressed with them, okay, one by one. There's other things that, okay, they needed somebody to be there with them to walk. There's so many different ways that God will do it. So don't lock yourself up struggling in private with something that there is deliverance for you for. There is help for you. There is help for you. I want you to type in the chat, say, there is help for me. I am not alone. There is help for me. I am not alone. I am not alone. Can y'all say that with me? There is help for me. I am not alone. Yeah. Amen. Truly, my, my prayer, because this is such, a, it's such a sensitive thing, and sometimes you sit and you watch people, and really it's by the grace of God, and I can think of myself. So sometimes, like, as I share all these things with you, is recognizing things that God has had to teach me and processes has had to walk me through so that I'll be able to overcome those things. But I really, really, really recognize how sometimes we have been prisoners of our own minds. We have been prisoners of the thoughts that we allow to roam freely in our mind, contrary to the truth of the word of God. And so if I can encourage you about anything today with everything that we talked about would be take inventory of your life. Is there anything in your past that you're ashamed of? Is there anything in your past that if anybody ever came, you were like, mm, I don't want to talk about this. Like, I don't really want them to know about this. And I'm not saying you have to go and announce them, but bring that thing up to the Lord and just open your heart up and just air that out before God so that you can be free of it. So that you can be free of it. Because here and now, you may encounter somebody tomorrow, and some of us, we've had people who we really could have helped, but because we have not been ready to address that thing, we were silent to offer help there because we, I don't want you to know that I struggled with that thing. I don't want you to know that I, I dealt with that. So mm, I'm going to protect my image. I'm going to protect uh, whatever you think of me. <laughs> like That's more important to me than helping you as my brother or sister in the body to be able to live, and that's wrong. Whatever that place is, deal with it before the Lord so that you can be free, not only for yourself, but that you can even be free enough to be a channel of deliverance for somebody else that is struggling with that thing. 
We shouldn't have to wait for scandals to break out and things to happen. Then suddenly it's like, oh, this person is also struggling with this. Oh, this person is also dealing with that. Oh, this person also struggled with this. Wait, what happened? Like, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. Your experiences, as painful as they may have been, I got to the point, like, I'll go through things sometimes, and it will be a laughing point for me to encourage myself. I'll be like, oh, God, I cannot wait to meet the person that I'm going through this for. And I'll just laugh and just sometimes with tears, I'm like, God, I cannot wait to meet that person. I'll be like, you were the reason. But I'll just say that and just try to lift myself out of that place because I began to understand this is not just for me. This is not for me. This is to help somebody else. And if we can begin to adjust our mind like that, I promise you, as a body, we will be so much stronger. Because even where others are weak, not, if, if nothing in life is new, if there is nothing new under the sun, nobody should be alone in their struggle in the body of Christ. Nobody should ever feel isolated in their struggle because there is somebody else that went through it. There is somebody else that experienced it. And because we know the reality of the freedom and deliverance of Christ, that means somebody else was brought out of it. So why are we not able to be there for one another? So that's my challenge for you. And my prayer for you is that you would find healing and peace So that where you are, you can be whole and ready for what God has for us this year. Because everything that has been declared, especially if you're connected to this house, 2023 is about to be amazing. And we're positioning ourselves, trusting that as the shepherd, he will lead us. Whether it's up in the still waters and the green pastures, whether we're going through the valleys, he is leading us. Because at the end of it, what did he say? There's goodness and mercy for us all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. So... Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys and stay tuned. We'll be right back for our next segment. Amen. Welcome back, everybody. So we have a very special Ask Auntie Benz today. As you can see, it's a little different setup, but I want to welcome somebody very, very, very special to set for this segment of Ask Auntie Benz. She actually doesn't know it, but I would like to welcome co-producer Olua Toyin to set. Well, this, well, let me tell you why, actually, why I just want to introduce her to you all. She is the producers of the show. Can you please tell them your name? My name is Oluwa Toyinkiwa, and I am not in person, in front of the camera person, but for Auntie Benny, you got it. Yes, (laughs) she's amazing, but we wanted to specially honor her today because it's her birthday. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my. Not just for her, but for everybody that's on this team. I think I've been sharing like on social media and everything, just even getting this vision and the instruction to start. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you and just what you've done along with Uju, who is also the other producer, but you guys have literally just made this everything that it is. All the sets, everything you guys see about Liv Yilda that makes it what it is. She is one of the masterminds behind it and so worthy to be. So we love you, and we have a cake for you. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Let's go. Oh, you want me to go? Okay. Cake flying in. Cake flying in. Thank you, guys. (laughs) The rest blew up. Can we sing for happy birthday to you? Happy birthday to you. Happy wow. birthday, dear Toy. Oh, <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Wow. Thank you guys. Woo! So you can blow your candles out. Okay, I'll hand this off. <laughs> I know, yes, we definitely put you on the spot, but wow. so still for us, Kanti Benz, we 
want to ask you, because of what we specifically talked about today, what's a people about one of the ways that you've been able to yield your past and yield your future to God? I knew this whole season has been for you, so what's one thing you could say to encourage? I was just about to say. You said it very plainly during your teaching about confessing and speaking it out and having someone you can speak to and trust mm. to share whatever it is from your past, confess it in your present to be able to move and enjoy your future. Yeah. And I literally, up until the mo like last night, wow. had a moment where I faced that and I had to do oh, that. I beautiful. had to confess something. I had to lay it down on the throne. And I woke up today feeling completely renewed. But it was something I that, that I literally was holding on to and I didn't want to say out loud because I had this thing in my mind like, oh, if I say it, I'm going to look this way or it's going to yeah. appear this way. But I had to let that go because shame doesn't belong to us. Amen. You know, and I don't Amen. hold that. So in releasing that, I'm finding that I get to live a more yielded life oh, that's beautiful. because I'm not bound. Amen. You know? So. I didn't know that, guys, so don't think. I promise you this is not scripted, so that's actually amazing for me to hear wow. as well. So that's really beautiful and encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so I really pray that that will empower you guys as well. But thank mm -hmm. you for your little wow. cameo, and happy birthday. This surprise cameo. <laughs> thank you so much, Auntie Betty. Wow. <laughs> they got the producer in front of the camera. Bye. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back, guys, and thank you for celebrating our amazing co-producer. That was beautiful, just having an opportunity to do that. And honestly, the Live Yolda crew is the best. I keep saying that, but these guys are amazing, so that was special. Um, but real quick, I have another special moment I'd like to share with you guys, and this is our, our artist spotlight for today. And this beautiful piece on set that you see is by none other than Kayla Johnson. She is a Los Angeles-based artist, and you can find her on Instagram and YouTube at Art by K. And her most recent work shows the beauty and challenges of relationships through color and technique, and she truly is gifted in what she does. And so she does commissioned pieces, she has original pieces, so go out, find her, connect with her, and definitely support her work. Amen. And that's all for you guys today. I pray that this episode blessed you. I pray that it challenged you. And I pray that you truly find freedom in living yielded through everything that we talked about today. And connect with us. Follow on Instagram. Go to bennydivine.com. And special treat for you guys. All the episodes so far are now officially available on podcast platforms. So wherever you listen to your podcast, just search Live Yielded and you can listen on the go. Please share. If this blessed you, let us know how. If you have questions, leave a comment on the video. I love to read those. We love to read those and we'll always try to answer on another episode. And so I'll see you guys next Wednesday right here on YouTube at Revolution Church LA. All day, always Live Yielded.